One of the most important parts about a scientific investigation is being able to share the data that you've collected. And oftentimes a graph is the easiest way to share that data. So here on page 10, we're going to talk about the parts of a graph. That's going to be our title. Okay. Parts of a graph. Many of this you've probably seen before. You've looked at graphs in elementary school. We're going to make sure we know everything that should be included in order to have a good graph that's easy to read. At the table, there is a copy of this graph that says bacterial growth at 72 degrees. We're going to glue this in at the top and use this as our example graph. Maybe leave like one line at the top. Okay. To remember the parts of a graph, there's an acronym that we can use. An acronym is like initials or a word that help us um, remember different parts of something. So the acronym that we're going to use is called TAILS, T-A-I-L-S. I'm going to write that right down here, T-A-I-L-S. Okay. So each letter stands for something that we need to have on our graph. This, the T stands for the title. The title, just like a book or a TV show, the title, is, it tells you what the graph is about. It tells you what you're looking at, what you can expect in the data. So we're going to say, tells what the graph is about. In this case, um, the title is Bacterial Growth at 72 Degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to draw a little arrow here. This is our title. The A in tails stands for axis. In a graph, there are two of these. Um, the Y axis is the up and down axis. The X axis is the one that goes across the bottom from left to right. So this is our y-axis, we're going to label that. And here is our x-axis down here. Okay. It's important to know which variable to put on each axis. That's the most important part about the A. The independent variable, whatever was manipulated by the scientist, goes on the x-axis. And the dependent variable, what you measure, goes on the y-axis. So I'm going to write IV for independent variable on x-axis and DV for dependent variable on y-axis. So in this case, the independent variable was time and the dependent variable was the number of cells. So again, I used IV and DV for independent variable and dependent variable. The I stands for interval. Interval just means the space between something. So in this case, it's the space or the amount between each number on the axis. It's important to make sure that it is equal. So we're going to write space between each number, and I'm going to make a note, equal. You can choose to count by ones, by twos, by fives, or tens, whatever is appropriate for the data that you have, as long as it stays the same. You can't start counting by fives and then switch to count by tens and then go back to fives. So if you look on the x-axis, the amount between these two numbers is one. The amount between these two numbers is one. So we would say that the interval of the x-axis equals 1. If we look at the numbers on the y-axis, there are a lot bigger numbers. We have a much bigger interval. We go from 0 to 500, 500 to 1,000, 1,000 to 1,500. So we're counting by 500. It's increasing by 500 each time. So we would say that the interval of the y-axis is 500. L stands for labels. 
we need to make sure that both axes are labeled with units. Axes is the plural way to say axis. We don't say axes, we say axes. So we need to make sure that both of the axes are labeled. What is it that we were measuring? What is the variable? And most importantly, what is the unit? Right here we have time. Time could be in seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, years. So we need to be sure that we know exactly what we're talking about. Okay, so this is considered the label right here. And then this is considered the label on the y-axis. The S stands for scale. The scale is the range of numbers on each axis from the minimum to the maximum. We need to make sure that they're appropriate. If we measured, um, if we collected data for 12 hours, we can't stop our graph at 6. We've got to have all 12. Or if we measured for 12 hours, we don't want our graph to go all the way to 24 because then nothing will be over here. So I'm going to say that the minimum and maximum values are appropriate and we need to use the entire graph. Again, we don't want a lot of extra space. Here you see it goes up to 4,096, so we went just above that to 5,000. We don't want to keep going any higher than that. I'm going to label this scale as all this right here. When it comes to tails, one of the most difficult things for students typically is to figure out the A, the axis which variable goes on which axis. So we have another trick or a helpful tool to help us remember that. So that's what I'm going to write here at the bottom of page 10. Okay, I'm going to set up a graph. You know, usually we have a graph that looks like this. All right, we have both of our axes. There are two words we're going to use. Those are dry, mix. So down the y-axis on the side, we're going to write dry, D, R, Y. And across the bottom, we're going to write mix. M, I, X. And this will help us remember which variable goes on which axis. So the D stands for dependent. Remember that's the variable that depends on the other one. Another way to describe that variable is responding. Sometimes it's called a responding variable because it responds to the other one. And then the Y, of course, that stands for Y axis. That's our vertical up and down axis. So when you think dry, the D for dependent goes with the Y for Y axis. Now across the bottom, the M stands for manipulated. Okay. Manipulated means changed. That's the variable that the scientist or you are changing on purpose. The I stands for independent, that's our independent variable, and then the x is the x axis. So we can think of dry, the d and the y go together for dependent y axis, and with mix, the i and the x go together, i for independent variable, x for x axis.